Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be doing my out-of-box review for the High Grade The Origin Aktazaku Cassilia's Forces version. So this is uh, just another Zaku from the HD The Origin line, right? Wrong! That's totally wrong. This is, well, very similar. It is, yes, another very, very similar to the Zaku, I will admit. Uh, but while I was building this kit, there are some small changes to it that I think definitely set this apart from other versions. So if you're thinking like, oh, it's just another another Zaku in the Origins line, really, I'm not interested in it at all. I would tell you to just watch on in the review because I think that there is definitely some uh, points to this kit that are really cool, really interesting, uh, new things that they did with this so that it's not just a completely repackaging uh, all the same aspects of the Zaku kits that we've built now a few times over. Well, there's nothing wrong with that because those kits are really good and this kit does carry over still all the all the same good things about those kits. Um, this does actually have a couple things that I think that it has actually improved on that even more. So if you could believe that it could get better, it does get better with this kit, I promise you guys. Now the look may not be for everyone, there's some interesting aspects of this. Uh, the extended snoot and the little bump on the head uh, make the head eh, mm, um, a little bit kind of... Mm, I don't know what to think about that. It's kind of okay. I think I prefer just like the more traditional look of the regular Zakutu head. But this one is is unique. It definitely has a very uh, MSV kind of look to it. And I think the colors just don't really match. Uh, the colors just don't really strike me as a really typical kind of MSV color scheme. I think the regular Act Zaku kit that's coming out as a P Bandai kit uh, is maybe a little bit more MSV sort of looking. Uh, but I think uh, something really like wild, more kind of... Uh, one of the more interesting, unique MSV color schemes I think would probably look better on this kit. So I'm looking forward to painting it, and painting this kit will be very fun and very little seam line removal because they have done something to fix the seam lines on this kit as well. So we'll talk all about that here in a minute. But as always, a big thank you to USA Gundam Store for sending me this kit, guys. Do check out the link to their store down below. Uh, love those guys. USA Gundam Store. Use that uh, Zaku Aurelius 10 coupon code and save 10% there on their site. So let's take a closer look at this guy and we'll go over a little bit of the articulation and some of those new points. Alright, so first off, starting off here in the head, if you remember from the other Zaku kits in HD or the Origin line, they had a little tab up underneath the head that you had to kind of reach up under there usually using a tool or a knife or something to turn the mono eye side to side, which was nice because for an HD Zaku, the ability to turn the mono eye side to side is something not all of the HD versions of the Zaku have. But in this kit, they've taken it one step farther and they've done like with the Master Grade kit, where when you turn the head, the mono eye moves along with the head. So there's a gear in there on that part. So that will move along when you turn the head. There we go, it's a little bit sticky there, as you can see. Oh, okay, the problem with that, with what it's doing, is that this part here is not supposed to move when you're turning the head, but if you're, if you're, if you're really trying, this part will also move, and if, you, if this part moves, then the mono eye won't move. So just make sure that this part uh, is stuck down where it needs to be. Basically, I think just make sure the head is pressed down when you're turning it, and that should work fine to make sure that it turns the way that's supposed to. So while the gimmick doesn't work uh, perfectly, uh, totally seamlessly, I think it does work certainly well enough, and it's really cool that they were able to build that into an HG kit. Just kind of, it kind of makes sense. It's not really the most complicated thing, uh, but that's a nice addition to that. Of course, the mono eye there is just a sticker. One complaint that I have had about these kits that uh, does still unfortunately continue with this kit is that the mono eye is not a molded detail on there. So when you go to paint that, you have to just paint a perfect circle. Not the hardest thing to do because you just take a, like a toothpick with a drop of paint and just drop it on there, and the drop will just flatten out as a circle. That's usually what I've done in the past and it works out fine uh, for Zaku Mono Eyes, but it's just much easier, much nicer when you have an actual raised detail on there. It's just very easy to just paint with a brush just whoosh, right over it and you're good to go. Moving on to the chest here, you can see I have put a couple of the stickers on this. They don't look very good. Uh, you can see uh, just stickers like these on top of dark plastic just never really look good. You can see the uh, clear part of that too well, so I wouldn't really go with those on a, on a painted kit, but the color separation here in the chest is amazing. Now, because this kit is so dark, here's where I think where the color scheme of it just kind of fails to show off how nice the kit is, just because it's so it's everything's just kind of lost in this massive darkness here. But you have this these gray parts, which is the color color of the inner frame, just poking out here, here, and down here, and it looks really nice. But it's just kind of hard to notice when you're looking at the kit from afar. When you're looking at it up close, you can see those, and they look really cool. So once that's painted again, I think those will really pop out nicely. Well, this doesn't quite have the stomach crunch range of the previous Zaku's in the line. It does still have a pretty nice stomach crunch forward and back. 
side to side, nothing really at all, but it can rotate a little bit. You can see as it rotates, it's pulling those side skirts because the these hoses here that run from the backpack run into the side skirt, which is cool. Uh, so when you move this, those, those actually move together. And I think that does work pretty nicely. Another really small gimmick that this kit loses that the previous versions of the Zaku kits had is that the sides of the chest kind of collapse in over the front when you're wanting to bring the arms forward. This one doesn't have that, but honestly, I don't think that was really the most useful thing. It was just a really small amount of movement, and while it was a kind of cool gimmick, uh, it really wasn't all that useful, and that's that holds true for a gimmick in the feet as well, which I'll come back to when we get down there to the feet. But for the arms here, the polycap will swing up. You can move the shoulder armor separately, so you can kind of move that out of the way. You're able to get the arm up vertically to about 90 degrees, which is not great, but it's not bad. Shoulder movement forward and back is just on a ball joint, so there's no swinging polycap or anything. It's just going to be whatever you can get out of that ball joint there. Here on the shoulder armor, this is the last remaining seam line on this kit. They've been able to engineer the other seam lines out, and it's basically just this one here on the shoulder armor. Not a big surprise. That's a pretty common one, but it's nice that the other ones are gone. Otherwise, the arm articulation is the same as usual. It rotates there at the top, 180 degrees. Nice full double joint there in the elbow. And then the wrist is just on ball joints here with our two hands, are just our holding hands here on the kit for now. And here's where you can see where they've fixed one of the seam lines. And what they did is they've just turned it into a panel line. So it's not really the best fix. I still think they, they definitely could engineer this arm in a way that there's no seam line there. They could make this into two separate pieces. Instead of two pieces side to side, just two pieces here, like uh, the main forearm part that you slide up onto there and then like the wrist like cuff part that you slide up on there to cap that part off. I, I'm sure that that could be done. I really don't know why they don't do that. But for whatever reason, that's just how it is. Front skirt armor can move independently and should be able to get completely out of the way as much as you'd like. It doesn't seem like that's going to be hindering any movement there in the leg. The side skirts, while I pointed out it was cool that they, they rotate, that they kind of move a little bit when you rotate at the upper body. Uh, as far as their movement on their own, they don't really move at all. You can't really move them out of the way for the legs. So if you want to get the legs in a really wide stance, you are able to do that. Uh, but it's not, it doesn't really, the, the side skirts don't really move at all, but they also don't really hinder anything, so it's not bad. Going around here to the backpack for a moment, the backpack is not new, so we do have these ports here on the side, so if you had different versions of the Zaku kits that had like the bazooka attachment, you could attach the bazooka onto the backpack here. But for this particular kit, we are able to plug on the large heat hawks there onto the backpack as well, so we'll come back to that. Uh, the little thruster bells here do move slightly up and down, not really too much. The back skirt doesn't move at all, but the same uh, connection ports there, which really haven't been utilized too much on any of the Zaku kits. Uh, but those are still there. Same hip joint here where the whole hip joint will swing forward and back. As you saw, the legs can go plenty far out to the side. Forward as well, not really going to be any issues here with that front skirt getting completely up and out of the way. Nice double bend in the knee so you can get a nice separation of that knee armor there. Looking very cool with all that separation and that nice detail there on the parts inside the knee joint. All very nice. Now here on the lower leg, this is where the previous kits did have also seam lines down the side. They fixed that here by just making those two halves of the leg just sandwiched together. And on the back of the leg, they've turned that seam into a panel line. On the front of the leg, it's just a separate part that plugs onto the front of the leg to cover up that seam. So no seams here on the legs at all. Very nice. Well, it looks like this front bit of ankle armor here might move. It actually doesn't. That's just solid on there in the back part there as well. Those are just solid pieces. But here you can see just a little bit more of that gray kind of inner frame plastic color just poking through there on the back. Now the ankle is another aspect of the kit that's changed and I think it can be for the better or worse, it's pretty much the same, but one thing that it does get rid of is it gets rid of the gimmick of the previous kits where the foot, actually when you move the foot forward, it actually bent the foot. There, it was actually a separate part here, the front and the back. In this case, the foot does not separate at all, but on a high grade kit, I really don't think that that's really all that bad. Uh, Again, it was a really small amount of movement there in the foot. It was cool, and it was a really interesting engineering they did with the previous versions, but the fact that it's gone with this kit, I really don't think that it's that big of a deal. This new ankle joint is pretty nice. It'll allow you to bring the foot forward all the way to there, back to here, and you can kind of fold that around to point the foot actually down pretty far, which looks pretty nice. You usually don't see that kind of downward movement on a Zaku foot, so that's pretty nice. Side to side of the ankle is actually not too bad either. You can get that to a pretty good uh, wide stance there. And then up underneath the feet, full details there, no hollow spaces or anything. Really, really nice detail. 
All right, so to go over the accessories quickly, we have, again, these sticker sheets. I said I used some of them. As you can see, I didn't use all of them. A lot of these smaller markings and these numbers, you can choose which number you want to use. I just threw a few on there just for the sake of showing you guys how they look. We have our same action base connector, which again, take it or leave it. I kind of wish it was just the standard like a three millimeter peg, but this is what we get. We have the same old heat hawk, just the active version here, and then the inactive version with a plug uh, that will plug onto the side skirt where you want to use that. You could also plug this onto the backpack into one of those ports there on the side of the backpack if you want. We have one open hand for the left hand. It's kind of an open hand slash gun support hand. And we also have a trigger finger hand for the right hand, which as you can see is mounted onto our new weapon for this kit. This is the quadruple mount machine gun. It's a pretty interesting looking weapon. I think it's very unique. It's sort of like a kind of simple handheld Gatling gun or just like a four barrel machine gun basically. The secondary handle, while it is very strange looking, uh, will fold out to the side. You do want to be careful with that while plugging that part in this uh, connection here. You can see I got a little bit of a white stress mark on that, uh, which means that I kind of pressed a little bit hard and this is just a really thin piece of plastic. So do be careful. Speaking of thin, this uh, back like butt of the machine gun here also very thin parts, very interesting, unique design. So very unique. That's definitely what we can say about this gun. I like it though. Unique is different. It's good. But then probably my favorite new weapon for this guy is the set of large heat hawks. Now this is, I think, a really cool take on the classic heat hawk design, which as I've said before, I know some people like it, but it gets a little bit boring for me. It's just kind of the same thing. This one though is different. It's new. I like it. Really cool, you new, unique shape to this. I like that a lot. And then we have a set of little connectors for that. So instead of just being like with the number one, other one where you have just one with a connector and one without, we have a separate connection piece to so be able to plug that onto there. And you can plug these onto the side skirts like so. So you can have them on there like that. And then again, you can plug this onto the backpack if you so choose to have it there. If you wanted to have that on there like that, so you could have the two of those plugged up onto the backpack if you want. And then you could also plug one onto the connection on the back skirt as well. So you can get really creative with where you want to plug all your weapons and everything on this. You can plug them pretty much anywhere. One thing that I find intriguing, and maybe one of you guys can answer this for me, was this, this connection piece. This peg side is where that plugs down onto the kit. Now on the other side, there's this square peg, which seems like that's supposed to plug onto something. Otherwise, there's not really any point to that being on there, this extra little like tab on the side. That seems like that's also supposed to plug into something, but I can't really quite figure out what, and it doesn't really show anything in the manual. So if you guys have any idea, or maybe you've seen that around on the internet, maybe let me know. So as I think I've made clear at this point, while I think there's a lot of really cool advancements to this kit, Bandai is just kind of really shooting their self in the foot by bringing this out at this point. I think people are just kind of tired of this and probably just going to see it as just another Zaku in the line uh, without being able to really notice a lot of the little finer points to the kit, which I think really make this kit really worthwhile. I really enjoyed it a lot, actually. Um, and while the design, I think there's aspects of the design that I, I like personally and some that I don't, it's not your average Zaku design. It definitely has that little bit more MSV feel to it, which that as well not going to appeal to everyone. Just for the uniqueness of the design, the uniqueness of those new weapons, which is also another thing that I think is definitely worth uh, checking out because most of the other Zaku kits have all pretty much come with the same different weapons, the long rifle, the bazooka, the Zaku machine gun, the heat hawk, that's pretty much it. Uh, this one has uh, totally new weapons, which is really cool. And just one more reason why I think this one definitely should not be passed up. As far as any negatives of the kit, I mean, really as far as what you're getting with the kit, there's... Really not too much negative that I could really say about it. Like I said, there's there's one seam line on the kit, really, aside from maybe whatever's on the weapons, which is even then, it's not really much there, even on like the uh, the giant, the large heat hawks, and on the machine gun, there's really not much seam line there either. So as far as that, in terms of like stickers, missing color, I'd say it's probably missing like a little, a few little tiny little bits of gray or something on some mechanical little details, but even the master grades have that so I'm not really going to fault it too much for that either. The stickers that you get with it I mean are just standard marking decals. There's not really too much that they can do about that uh, unless they were going to give you water slides which as we know that we just don't get with high grade kits. So I mean if you had any doubts about getting this kit I can pretty much tell you that there's really nothing that you need to worry about with this kit. It is 100% almost 100% positive. So as long as you are okay with the colors or you paint, and as long as you like the design, then you're going to love this kit. So that's going to pretty much do it for the review, guys. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. I highly recommend this kit. It's a really cool kit. If you guys have never tried any of the HG The Origin kits, you really, really need to. They're really awesome, especially the Zaku ones, but 
pretty much just all of them are really good. I really like this series a lot. Uh, so I'm always looking forward to the new ones coming out. The detail on them is absolutely fantastic. The engineering in terms of the articulation and just the way the kits go together are really cool. They're sort of, they're sort of like between what we normally maybe once thought of as high grades and something almost closer to master grade in terms of like some of the engineering that goes into these. So they're really, really nice. But as always, if you guys do have any other questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those down below. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam store. Use that coupon code ZAKUARILIUS10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.